Hello all, in today's video I will show you how to create dynamic material instances and modify their parameters using Blueprint. Let's jump in. In your content drawer, first we'll create two assets. I'll right click, I'll create a material. I will call this M underscore wood dynamic. We'll right click again and create a new Blueprint class of type actor. I will call this BP underscore dynamic panel. So the material will be the wood object and then we'll put that onto a mesh in our blueprint and change its parameters. So first I'll open up my wood and we'll create the material. In my content drawer, I will search at the head of the directory Walnut, and we will use some of the default textures. So I'm going to use the wood floor texture, the uh, metallic texture, which is just a bitmap that's black and white, and the normal. We'll start with the normal because it's the easiest. I'll drag the RGB into the normal panel or the normal slot. And we can see already that it has applied some normal effects to our sphere in the top left. And next we'll do our color. I will drag off my RGB into a linear interpolate node or lerp. We'll drag off here and say multiply. I will press and hold three on my keyboard and left click to create a constant three vector. This can also be done by searching for constant three vector. I'll drag this in here. I will right click my constant and I will say convert to parameter and call this color. I'm going to change the value of this to red. I will drag this into the B. I will pull off my alpha and type scalar parameter. And I will call this color contribution. and I will set the slider max in the details panel to one. I'll drag this into my base color and put a comment around this by dragging and then pressing C on my keyboard and typing color to group this section of logic. Now we will add some logic for our roughness. I will drag off my RGB and type cheap contrast. We'll drag off here and say scalar parameter and call this contrast. I'm going to give this a value of 0 0.001. And what this is doing is if we preview this node by right clicking and saying start preview node, we can see this map on our sphere, or I'll change this to be a cube. And if I right click the contrast, I can see that. If I change this value, it will give me a different value and just allow us to sort of change the levels of this. So I'll do 0 0.01 for now. And I will drag this into a multiply. I'll right click this to stop previewing. I will drag off of the B and I will type lerp. Or linear interpolate. Drag off here and type scalar parameter. And I will call this roughness multiplier. And I'm actually going to drag this from the A to the B and give this a value of 0.1 and this a value of 5. And then off of the alpha, I will create a new scalar parameter. And I will call this roughness contribution. I'll pull off of here and I will say one minus. We'll invert the value. And then I will clamp this value between 0.2 and one. I will drag this into my roughness. And then I will drag 
a comment around this and say roughness. Now a quick explanation of what's happening is we are going to change the color contribution value in our blueprint from zero to one, which will dynamically switch the stream of this linear interpolate. So when the value is zero, it will give us this A, and when it is one in this color contribution, it'll give us the B. And as it transitions between the two, you can see it'll go at 0.5, it's halfway between, um, and at zero, it is just this default color. And then a similar thing is happening down here. Basically, we're going to interpolate between this 0.1 value, which is what we see now, and when the roughness contribution is one, we'll see this very shiny material. And we'll change this roughness contribution in our blueprint. All right, let's save this and now we'll edit our blueprint. I'll go to my content drawer and I will find the blueprint I've created, which I've called dynamic panel. We'll double click to open it up. We'll add two components. The first, will be a cube, the second will be a box collision. I'm going to make sure that these are separate and not parented to each other. So first, the box, I will make the box extent 200 by 200 by 200, then I will move it up 200 units. So this is a 400 by 400 centimeter box, and then I will take my cube and I will make the scale four by four by 0.25. I will get my wood material and I will apply it to the cube. You can see now it's on, on the cube. I'll compile and I'll save. And we'll go to our event graph. I'm gonna delete those two nodes because I don't need them. And first I'm going to create our dynamic material instance. So I'll take our cube, I'll pull off, and I'll say create dynamic material instance. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull off here and say get material. This will give us our first index material. And from here, I'll say create dynamic material instance. And so this is what's interesting. There's multiple variations of this. I'm going to use the second which will create a, dy a dynamic material instance from this material. The other does a sort of from a primitive component, but I'm gonna use this one. So I will then drag this into here. I'll pull off this return value and I will promote this to a variable. I'll call this dynamic material reference. And I will take my cube, I'll copy this over here. I will say set material. I'll drag this in here. And then I'll drag this into my material slot. And so it's setting index zero, which is what we've created from over here. I'll create a comment and say create material. Keep things clean. Now I'll right click on my box collision in the top left and I'll say add event on component begin overlap. I'll do the same for on end overlap. And it should be on by default, but make sure that generate overlap events is on in our details panel. And that in the collision settings, you have either overlap all dynamic or overlap only pawn. So on overlap begin, I will pull off and say cast to character to make sure that what is overlapping the box is a character. Assuming it is, I will say add timeline. We'll call this timeline lerp material value timeline. And let's double click into this. In the top left where it says track, I will add a float track and I'll call this lerp contribution. I'll make the length of this quarter seconds long, so 0.25. I'll right click in here and add two keys. The first I will set at zero 
time and zero value. Second, I will set at 0.25 for time and one for value. And I'll select both of these keys and press one on my keyboard to change the keys to make them a auto tangent instead of linear. I'll compile and I'll go back to my event graph. So from here, I have this LERP contribution, which as the timeline progresses from zero seconds to 0.25, it's gonna spit out the, this value along the Y axis. So halfway through, it's gonna spit out 0.5 and you know so on. And it's gonna come out right here. So what I need to do is I will right click and say linear interpolate. It's just LERP. Um, I'm going to feed this LERP contribution into the alpha. And I'm going to change the B value to 1. And then I will drag off update and say set scalar parameter value. Actually, first, I'm going to get my dynamic material reference. And then from here, I will say set scalar parameter value. Let's just make sure we're getting the right target. So I'll drag this from update into here. I'm gonna drag this return value into here. And then I will drag off our parameter name and say promote to variable. And it's called parameter name. And I will expose this so we can set it on the outside of our blueprint. Normally we'd want to, you know, either use some sort of select node or something or set this text value in the beginning. I am just going to set it from the outside. So I'll compile, I'll save. And then basically when we enter the volume, we want one thing to happen. And when we exit, we want it to return to its previous condition. So what I'm going to do is I will similarly cast a character down here. So I'm going to control C and control V that I'll drag my actor into this object. So this is the thing that we are going to test. We're going to say, are you a character? If so, do what happens out of this pin. So I'll say reverse from end, and then it will do the same process here, but going from B to A. So I'll compile and I'll save. And now we'll test out in our environment. So I'm going to go to my map and I'm going to take my dynamic panel and I'm going to drag two of them in. So in our material, we have these two names. The first is roughness contribution. So I will copy that and I'll paste that into my parameter name here. And the second is our color contribution. So I'll control C this, I'll select my other panel and I will paste that there. So I'm going to drag these into the center of my map. And if I press G on and off, we'll be able to see my box collisions. And so let's test this out. So I'm going to right click and I'll say play from here. And so now when I enter, we can see that this is going to turn red on a timeline. When I exit, it will return. And then for our second box, it has now become shiny. And then it will return when I exit. So now I will duplicate a series of these. I'm going to copy these over. I'm going to rotate them to make a checkerboard. and I will duplicate these out. So now I will run through them. I'll play from here. And I can see that as I step on these different panels, it's going to change the value on the timeline. And so that's a little bit fast, so maybe I'll make it a little bit slower. So I'll change this value 2.5 and I'll change this time to 0.5 so we can see it a little bit more slowly. And I'll step onto this and we can see this change. So this is a combination of a few important elements and some things that some people have reached out asking for more information on. So I hope this helped and I hope you learned something new. And if you enjoyed, please leave a comment and let me know what you'd like to learn about next. Thanks all.